Hi guys, today I'm gonna to take you through a version of a review for your final exam. So you're gonna notice in the top of this that it does say Algebra 2A exam for this year. But I'm gonna tell you right now, this is a version of the review that I'm gonna give. One review if you are a cohort A or B student will be doing in class. If you are a cohort C student, I will post the review on Google Classroom and you will complete it and turn it in just like the kids who are in class are gonna turn it in when they're done. And this kind of models the exam that you're gonna have. So for Algebra 2A, there's a lot of graphing ones that we have been working on. So in order to be able to accomplish this review, um, there are 13 problems. So we're gonna go through and solve some of these. Some of them I'm gonna have to graph. I'll add some graph paper to my um, actual presentation. And if you're taking the test, again, if you're an A or B and you're taking it in person with me, you're going to write all over the test there. If you're taking it home, you're going to do a Google form to answer it, but you're going to be required to turn your work in in order to receive credit, just like you would have to show your work in class to receive credit. So I want you to keep that part of it in the back of your mind so you're not surprised by that when we actually get to the test. Okay, now I'm gonna go through these problems kind of one at a time, and I'm gonna use kind of the space over here. So when we're going to look at this, there are a couple of them are gonna take a little bit more room. Normally, I'd give you box paper or something else to work on, or lined paper would be great. Um, but I'm gonna try to do the best I can to solve them down here. Again, if you're doing it at home, you're gonna be doing it on lined paper and use some graph paper. If you're doing it um, at school, you're gonna have box paper and graph paper there. So I'm going to start with the first one. So I have um, the absolute value of 2x plus 1 equals 5. So absolute value of 2x plus 1 equals 5. So remember the absolute value is the big idea is to have the absolute value by itself, which I do right here. As soon as I have it by itself, I can do my two branches. First time through, we just drop the absolute value. I'm going to add an or. The second time through, this 5 becomes a negative 5. Okay, and now my job is just to go through and solve them. So if I'm worried about this side, i got to get x by itself. So I need to get rid of this. So the opposite of adding 1 is subtracting 1. So I have 2x left on this side, and then 5 minus 1 is going to be 4. Then the only thing I would need to do to get x by itself is divide both sides by 2. So I get x equals 2. Now I'm going to bring down this line so my or is right there keeping my two pieces um, separated as we go. Okay, now I'm going to move over to the other side. So on the other side, to get x alone, I'm going to start by getting rid of this. So the opposite of adding 1 is subtracting 1. So same step here. So remember, these are going to be really my two same steps on this side as well. So I'm going to subtract 1. So negative, one, my, or negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. Then I would have to divide both sides by 2 and I get x equals negative 3. So that means I'm looking for x equals 2 or x equals negative 3. So that's going to match that. So again, I'm going to ask you to circle. If you're in person, you're going to circle it and write it on the line. Same thing you're going to do for the exam. Okay, now to be able to go to this next one, this is going to take a little bit more area. So I'm actually going to erase this part. And I'm going to take this inequality right there and put it up here. So I have 2, and then it is the absolute value of 4x minus 1 minus 5 equals 5. So we have quite a bit of work to do in order to get this x by itself. So we're going to start with getting rid of this. So the opposite of subtracting 5 is adding 5. 
So I have 2, absolute value of 4x minus 1. And then 5 plus 5 is going to be 10. So I'm getting closer to getting the absolute value alone. But now I've got to get rid of this 2. So the opposite of multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2. So I get 5. Okay, now the absolute value is by itself. So now I can do my two branches. So the first time through, just drop the absolute value. I'm going to add my or. The second time through, that positive 5 is going to turn to a negative 5. So now we're going to go through and start to get x by itself. So to get this x by itself, i got to get rid of this first. So the opposite of subtracting 1 is adding 1. So I have 4x equals 6. Now, to get x by itself, I would just divide by 4. Now, if I use Desmos and reduce that 6 over 4, I would get 3 over 2, which is 1 and a half. Bring down my or. Now, I'm going to do the same thing over here that I did over here. So I start with adding 1 and dividing by 4. So add 1. And then divide by 4. So it's negative 1. So x equals negative 1. So those are my two answers. So x equals 1 half or x equals negative 1. So that matches A. Okay, so far these are the ones we started the trimester with. So again, don't be afraid to go back in that playlist of videos and watch anything you're having trouble with. So the next part says solve the absolute value equation and graph the solution. Sorry guys, I'm just wiping my screen here a second. So I'm gonna have to go through and solve this and then I'm gonna figure out what graph it goes with. So I have x minus one equals two. And I think, I'm just gonna move this up just a little bit here, just so I have a little more room. Maybe not. <laughs> Technology is grand when it actually works. There we go. Okay, so the absolute value is by itself, so I can do my two branches. So x minus 1 equals 2. And then on the other side, 2 is going to become negative 2. So to get x alone, I'm going to do the opposite of this. The opposite of subtracting 1 is adding 1. On this side, we're going to do the same thing. So add 1. So now if I'm going to go ahead and look and see what answer that matches. So it's 3 and negative 1. That's going to match this. Now notice when they graph anything that's an equation, it's just going to be dots. So you're just you're just going ahead and, and putting the points on the one number on the number line and the second value. Okay, so to do number four, it's another one that's going to need a little more room. So I have three times the absolute value of 3x minus 5 minus 6 equals negative 3. So I'm going to use my little bit of my room down here to give myself space to solve. So if I'm doing this, the first thing I'm going to want to do is get rid of that part. So the opposite of subtracting 6 is adding 6. So 
Okay, now to get rid of this three in front, this is three times the absolute value. So the opposite of multiplying by three is dividing by three. Okay, so now my job becomes the absolute value is by itself. We can do our two branches. So 3x minus 5 equals 1. On the other side, it's going to be negative 1. And then I'm going to go through to solve. So I'm going to add 5. And divide by 3. So I end up with 2 on the first one. Now, I'm going to go through and do the same thing I did over here. I added 5. That'll be my first step here. Then dividing by 3 will be the second step. It'll work like that every time. So if I add 5, 3x equals now 4. Divide by 3. I get x equals 4 thirds. Now remember, 4 thirds is the same as... 1 and 1 third. So I can look for either one of those when I go to look at the answers. So if I have 2 and 1 third, that's going to match C here. Okay, now we have the rest of the problems that we have on the exam. So this is 4. So from 5 on, all of them but one are going to have some kind of graphing, either on a number line or on a graph, one or the other. So I'm going to move this here. Should already have that part done. And we're going to use, I'm going to use some of the space to kind of help me solve because the struggle is real when it comes to space in here. And again, in class, you can use some box paper and graph paper. At home, you're going to have to use line paper and some graph paper. So this one says solve the inequality and graph the solution. And I have the absolute value of 2x plus 4 is less than 16. So what I'm going to do to kind of help myself here, I'm just going to graph, I guess, a little bit above here. And we'll see how we do with that. So I have the absolute value of 2x plus 4 is less than 16. So I'm going to go through absolute values by itself. So I'm going to go through and do my two branches. So 2x plus 4 is less than 16. Remember, the first time through, all you do is drop the absolute values. Now the second time through, remember, you're going to flip this sign and flip the sign of this. So 2x plus 4, and now this is going to be greater than negative 16. And now I'm going to go through and start to solve. So to get x by itself, I'm going to get rid of this first. So the opposite of adding 4 is subtracting 4. So I have 2x is less than 12. Then to get x by itself, I would just have to divide by 2. So I have x is less than 6. So I'm going to bring my or down. Now, as I go to the next part, I'm going to do the same thing there. I'm going to subtract 4 and divide by 2. So if I subtract 4, negative 20, and then divide by 2, I have negative 10. So this is the first part of my answer. Now, I do want you to notice that not all of the choices here for answers are kind of written in that way. So I want to give you a little hint. Um, first of all, we know that there's no way it's this one because we have 10, negative 10 and 6. So we know it's not also that one. So I have two left, and do you see how they both have x kind of in the middle? So this is the way they write that. They take whichever number is bigger, so I have 6 and negative 10, so this one's bigger. So they're going to start 
by placing that at this end. Notice that's written exactly like this is. Now we know negative 10 is smaller, so that's got to go at the smaller end. Then I want you to notice inequality. Do you see how it points at the negative 10? So down here I would need to point it at the negative 10. So if I was looking at this, I can tell it's probably going to match this one. Okay, now I've got to graph it to actually back that up. So the two numbers that they care about are negative 10 and 6. Now at 6, it's an open circle, and it goes this way. At negative 10, it's an open circle, and it goes that way. So I can tell on these that it definitely overlaps. So remember, I'm going to bring this one up and this one down. And I'm going to fill in the in-between. That's the graph I'm going to look for. Now, if you look at the graph that's down here, that matches that. See how this is at negative 10? And even though that's 5 here, 6 would be just a little bit past that. So you can see that that actually matches. But remember, you must have the solving for the, for the inequalities and the graphing on there to earn credit. Okay, let's go to number 6. So in number 6, I have the absolute value of 3x plus 9 is greater than 30. So the absolute value is already by itself. So I can go ahead and do my two branches. So 3x plus 9 is greater than or equal to 30 or 3x plus 9, and I guess switch the inequality, and the positive 30 becomes negative 30. And then I have to start going through this to solve. So on this side, to get x by itself, we're going to get rid of this first. So the opposite of adding 9 is subtracting 9. So I have 3x is greater than 21. So now to get x alone, I've got to get rid of the 3. So we're going to divide both sides by 3. So I end up with x is greater than 7. Okay, now the good news is we're going to use the same steps from this side over here. So subtract 9, divide by 3. So if I subtract 9, end up with 39, negative 39, then divide by 3, and I end up with negative 13. So there's my two answers. So when I go back and look, I can see as far as the inequalities, it matches B. So I think B is going to be the answer. Let's make sure the graph matches too. So the two numbers they care about are negative 13 and 7. So for 7, it's a filled circle, and it goes this way. And I can already tell with the other one that the line's going to go the other way. So they're going to go off the opposite ends of the line. So I can actually draw it up here if I want. It goes that way. So now you can see by looking at the one that's here, negative 13 would be somewhere between. So there you go. 7 is going to be somewhere between 5 and 9, so that one goes, so you can see that it matches B. Okay, now we're going to make a change over to start talking about graphing. So when I get to number 7 here, before we do anything else, I just want to grab... Hang on one second, I just want to grab my graph paper here. Oh, there's one. Oops, I don't think it needs to be quite that big. Okay, so there's my graph paper. So I have, this problem says solve the system of inequalities by graphing. So you can see I have two inequalities here. So I'm going to graph one and graph the other one right on top of it to make sure that I can see kind of what they have in common. So down on the bottom here next to where this graph is, I'm going to bring my two inequalities down. So I have this one, and I have this one. 
Now we've talked about with all of these that you have four specific pieces that you have to get. Slope and intercept, the kind of line, and the kind of shading. So we're going to go and get our information out of both of these. So here is my B value. So I know my B value is negative 2. Here is my M value. So because I want rise over run, I'm going to make it negative 2 over 1. Because that's easier to be able to go through and make sure you know how to move on the graph. Now, if I have that kind of inequality, we said it's going to be a filled in or a solid line. Now, we know it because it has that little line underneath it. So if that's my inequality, because it has a less than as part of it, I'm going to shade below. Now, these four pieces are a must. You have to show that. Okay, if I go to the second one, there's no number here in front of x, so I'm going to assume it's 1. So my B value is negative 2. M is going to be 1 over 1 for our rise over run. If I have that kind of inequality, it's going to be a dashed line. And if I have that kind of inequality, I'm going to shade above. So again, I need these four pieces before I start doing anything. And now we've got to graph those on here, one right on top of the other. So I, if I go with the first one, my y-intercept is negative 2. And my slope is negative 2 over 1. So I go down 2 and over 1. Now I know I've got more points back here so I can work backwards. So I can go up 2 and back 1. And I'm going to keep going. Now, we said this has to be a solid line. Okay, not very straight line, guys. I'm trying here. There we go, much better. Okay, it has to go all the way across. It should have arrows on the end. And now this one, I'm going to shade below. So I'm going to, I'll use yellow on this one just so you can see it. Um, I'm going to shade below. Okay, now I'm going to go to the next line. So for the next line, remember we start with our B, so it's still at negative 2, but my slope is 1 over 1, so I'm going to go up 1 and over 1. And then I'm going to go back one, down one and back one so I can get the ones that are over here. Now, we said this line had to be dashed. So you're going to find some kind of way to show that it's dashed. Okay, I guess I'll choose blue here. Maybe. There we go. And this one I'm going to shade above, so it's going to be on this side. Now, when you see your graph, the only answer spot they're going to give you is where it overlaps. So you can see in this one how the overlap is here. So they're not going to show you this part or this part. The only way you're going to see where the overlap is to actually graph them. So I'm going to zoom out just a minute so you can see these. So if I want one that matches that, the only one I'm going to have is B here. And you can see right here, it's kind of this little area here, if I try to graph it in. It's a little light on, on this copy. You can kind of see it if I zoom in. You'll see that one matches it. So our answer will be B. Now listen, if you mark B and I don't see anything about this stuff down here, I don't see a graph, I don't see the four pieces, um, we're going to have issues because I'm not going to be able to tell what's what. Now, you will kind of notice I did yellow here for this yellow part and blue here for this blue part. So kind of color coding this will help you as well when you're going back to look. Okay, let's go to the next one. So again, the next one's going to be a graphing one, so I'm going to add that piece of graph paper here. 
There we go. Put it on one side because I know I'm going to have to bring my inequalities down here. Okay, so my inequalities are y is less than or is greater than or equal to negative x minus 2, and y is less than or equal to 1 third x minus 2. So I'm going to bring those two down here. There's my two inequalities. We're going to start right now by getting out our four important pieces that we have. So remember, there's a one here, if that helps to remind you. Um, but I do have, let's see. That's going to be my B value, and that's going to be my M value. So B is negative 2, and M is negative 1 over 1. Now remember, if there's only a whole number, put it over 1. And if there's a negative, it has to go at the top number so that you have a rise and run. Okay, now I have to think about... what I'm going to do to figure out the kind of line. So if it's that, oops, that kind of inequality, then it knows it's got to be a filled in line. Then if it's that inequality, I know I need to shade above. Okay, now we're going to get those four pieces um, from the other equation. So my M value, oops, I guess let's do B first. B is negative 2. My M value is 1 over 3 for my rise and run. If I have that kind of inequality, it's a filled in line. And that kind of inequality is going to be shaded below. So that part needs to be on there. Now I'm going to go through and start to graph them. So on my first one, my B value is negative 2. My slope is negative 1 over 1. So I'm going to go down 1 and over 1. Now, I know there's got to be points back here. So from here, oh, let me change that color here. So from here, I would go up one and back one to kind of backtrack. So I can make sure that I know where the path is going through using my slope. Okay, so it's a filled in straight line. And I know on this one that I'm going to shade above. Okay, now we're going to make the change over to the next one. So y-intercept is still negative 2, so it's still that spot. The slope this time, though, is 1 over 3. So I'm going to go up 1 and over 3. Then I'm going to backtrack from here, so I'm going to go down 1 and back 3. Now this is still a filled in line, so make sure that you can tell that your line is filled in and solid. And on this one, we're going to shade below. Remember, get close to the line, but don't quite touch it. Okay, now the part where they overlap is right here. That's the only part that's going to be your answer. And you can actually see right here that D is the one that matches it. So remember, the only part that you're going to see for answers up here are the ones that are actually the in the overlapping area. Okay, now here is the good news. As far as systems where we have to graph one on top of another, there you go. 
the, we're not going to see any more than that. You're only going to have, you know, ones like seven and eight, like the two we just did. Now, the ones that come after this are only going to have just one inequality. Now, I am going to do something I don't normally do. On my copy, it's a little darker. So I'm just going to take a second right now and shade the, the pieces so you can see it a little darker. It's in gray. So once we start writing, it's kind of hard to see them sometimes. So I'm going to just mark these here. Just so you know what side it is. When you actually see your copy, I think it'll be darker. Okay, so I have the inequality of y is less than 4x minus 3. So let's get our four important pieces for this one. So I'm going to go below here. And I'm going to go through and get... The graph paper. Okay, now my B value is negative 3. My slope is 4 over 1 for my rise over run. With that kind of inequality, it's going to give me a dashed line. And with that kind of inequality, it's going to be shaded below. Now, the good news is you're only going to shade one. So this one is just going to be just shade, shading this one inequality. So now we're going to start by graphing. And we're going to start with this piece right there. So negative 3. Now, my slope is 4 over 1. So that means I'm going to go up 4 and over one. And I'm gonna keep going up four over one. Now, this is gonna be a dashed line. So I'm gonna do my best here. It's a little harder to do the dashed line with this little line maker on my iPad. So we'll do our best here. Okay. Now this one, we have to shade below, which means it's going to be shaded on this side. Okay, now if I look at the choices that I have here, the only one that would match that would be B. Okay, we're getting close, guys. We have 10, 11, 12, and 13 left. So here's my next one. Um, 8x plus 2y is greater than or equal to 18. Now the big thing for us is that's not written in the right form. So first of all, I'm going to move this down here. But I need to get it in slope-intercept form before I can do anything. Okay, because it's not the right form. Now, just like I did in the last time, I just want to make these just a little darker here so you can tell the side they're shaded on. Now you can tell if you were to look up close because you can see like the gray, the little gray outline here so you can kind of tell which one it is. I think in a few of these it's just a little hard to see when I switched it over to PDF. So I just want to make sure you can tell. Okay, now we're going to start by taking this inequality right here and we're going to get it in y equals form. So that means y is the only thing on one side. So let's get rid of this first. So I assume that that's a positive 8x, so I'm going to subtract 8x from both sides. 2y is greater than or equal to... Now, when I put these together, remember, x has got to come before your number. So negative 8x plus 18. And I wrote plus 18 because I assume that's a positive number. Okay, now to get y by itself, I've got to get rid of this 2. So the opposite of multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2. And every single thing needs to get divided by 2. So it's going to be y is greater than or equal to negative 4x plus 9. Now once I have that, I can start to get my four important pieces. So my b value is 9. 
m is negative 4 over 1 for rise over run. For that inequality, oops, it's going to be a filled in line. And for that kind of inequality, we're going to shade above. Now remember, you have to have these four pieces and they have to be written before you can start to graph. Okay, so now if I'm looking at this, I'm going to start graphing with this piece right here. So positive 9 is there. Now if my slope is negative 4 over 1, I'm going to go down 4 and over 1. And I'm going to keep going. I know this about myself, that if I'm going to graph, the more points I have, the better off I am. Now we know this is going to be a solid line. So a line goes through all of them, all the way across. And this one has to be shaded above. Now, if I look at that one, the only one that's even close to matching that is going to be C right here. Okay, three left. So for the next one, I have y is greater than negative 4x plus 1. Now again, I'm just going to darken these so you can see them. So I have those. Oops, I hit the line. My bad. Okay, I'm going to take this inequality and I'm going to move it down here just so that I can write it and I'll put my graph paper here. So for 11, I have this inequality. I'm going to grab some graph paper. I'll put it there just so that I have enough room to do 12 when I get there. Okay, so if I'm looking at that inequality, let's start getting our good pieces. So our B value is positive 1. M is negative 4 over 1 for rise over run. If I have that inequality, it's a dashed line. And if it's that inequality, it's shade above. So you should have all of those pieces before you even start. Okay, so when I go to graph, I'm going to start with this. So my B value is 1. Now, if my slope is negative 4 over 1, I'm going to go down 4 and over 1. And I'm going to work backwards and get them. Okay, now this is a dashed line. So dashed as it goes, and if it's shaded above, it's shaded on this side. Okay, so now if I'm looking at which one it matches, and I'm looking back, the only one it's going to match is C. Okay, now, on 12, write the following inequality in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to change my color here. I'll just do 12 over here. That basically means it wants it to be in some kind of y equals form. So it's got to kind of follow y equals mx plus b. Now, that means I've got to get y by itself. So let's get rid of this first. So the opposite of positive 6x is negative 6x. So that's a reminder you're going to subtract 6x from both sides. So I have 2y, because this cancels, 
then negative 6x plus 44. Now remember when I'm doing this, it's got to be the x first and then your number. That's why I move that first. Then divide by 2. So y is greater than or equal to negative 3x plus 22. So that matches D. Okay, our last one left. This one is an inequality, but they're going to give us one inequality to start with. And they want us to be able to figure out which one matches this. So first of all, just from looking at this, you can tell two things. You can tell that it is a filled in line. And you can tell it's shaded below. Now, just based on those two things, if, it's, if it is a filled in line, it's got to have the equal to with the inequality. If it's shaded below, it's got to be less than. So less than or equal to together are the ones that are the choice. So that means it can't be this one or this one. So I'm down to only C or D as a choice, and I haven't really done much yet. Now, that is my y-intercept, which means that that's my b value. So b value is positive 2. So here, this one's negative 2. That one's positive 2. So I can tell it can't be this one. So I know kind of where I'm shooting for. So I know it's got to be less than or equal to from this. I know it's got to have a plus 2 at the end. Okay, I'm just going to change color so you can see this. But if I want to find my slope, I find two points in a line, and then I make that little triangle. So it goes down 2 and over 1. So to be able to do my slope, I'm going to do rise over run. So negative 2 over 1, which is negative 2. And then that's going to go here. So I can see it matches that. Okay, keep reviewing and going over those videos.